Hey, I'm Christy Friesen and I am all gloved up here at Cool Tool Studios because we're going to play with epoxy clay. And you need gloves because epoxy clay is an amazing dimensional putty that dries rock hard. And if you haven't used this yet, oh my goodness, I'm about to open up a door in your creative house you never even knew was there. We're going to have some fun, so come and join me and let's make something with epoxy clay. Okay, so here's what we're going to use. We're going to make a little covered tin. So I have one of those little inexpensive tins uh, that you can hide secret treasures in. And you can use any kind of metal tin, ceramic tin, a little like vintage glass covered dish or something like that. It doesn't matter because epoxy clay will grab to all of those things. The only thing it won't grab to very well is things like plastic. Now I chose this one because it has a flat lid and I'm also going to be using one of these metal clay medallions as kind of a centerpiece. So that's why the flat lid for me. Then here's some other tools. I have these pair of um, pliers around because I might need them to help me push things in. So they're my second set of hands. And then I've got these wonderful stainless steel tools. They're sculpting tools from my product line and I freaking love them. And this Wow It's Awesome is probably the one that will come in the most handy if we need a little manipulation. So I always have them just nearby in case. Paintbrush. Because who knows, we might use pan pastels at the end to add color to our creation. We'll just have to see. Now I have an assortment of yummy goodies. Some pearls and some various cubic zirconia of assorted colors, depending on what mood hits me as I create. Then these are a whole bunch of stampings. Now some of them are just raw copper, raw nickel, but these have some swelligant on them. And if you don't know what that's all about, why just kind of click, click, click on the Cool Tools website and you will find videos where I tell you all about swelligant and how to achieve this effects on your raw metal stampings. I have a little tough card. This is a Teflon thing and I'm going to put my epoxy clays on it because nothing sticks to Teflon. So it's fantastic to have around. If any of the pieces that I was going to put on the tin were going to be touching the bottom surface, well then I would have my tough card right underneath it so it wouldn't permanently bond itself to the table or the tile or whatever. And that brings us to epoxy sculpt. This is the epoxy clay that I'm going to use because it's my favorite and I just really love it. It's a two-part system and it comes in lots of different colors. We're going to use black today but it also comes in white and like I said other colors and you can add color to it to make your own little blend by just using powder and that sort of thing just to increase the different changes of color like if you were using white and you wanted it to be more teal you could use a little bit of teal mica powder or chalk powder. All right are you ready to begin? Me too. So I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit and the first thing we're going to do is mix up our epoxy clay. I like to just use a tool and scoop out sort of an eyeball's worth of my epoxy clay of what I think it will take to cover the tin plus a little extra. Now remember it's going to be double that so that's probably more than enough and I've just scooped it out of there. You could use a plastic spoon or something. I'm just using one of my tools but I'm immediately using my wet wipe to clean it for two reasons. Number one, you don't want cement all over your expensive tools. That kind of wrecks the experience. And you also don't want to start incorporating one part into the other because it's going to start a chemical reaction. So we want to minimize the contact. So what I want to do is I want to take this piece and ball it up, kind of get an idea of how much there is so that I can do the same with this. And I always go what I think is a little less because adding more is easier than taking it away because once you take it away, what are you going to do with it? So I think they're almost the same. I feel like I need just a teeny bit more black to make two equal parts. So we'll go back and grab just a little. I'm using the other side of the tool for cleanliness and we'll put just a little bit more on. If you want to weigh it so that you have equal amounts by weight, that is cool. They have about the same density, so that's no problem. But I've never had any trouble eyeballing it, so it's not like super sensitive to exactitude. But you do want to get as close as you can to two equal parts. So there we are. We've got our two equal parts. Now we're going to blend them together. And all you do here is using gloved fingers, knead it until there are no more streaks showing. 
back and forth, back and forth, just la 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 la. Think happy thoughts and before you know it, you'll be done. It's rather soft and this is a chemical reaction. So once those two parts start being mixed together, you can't just go, oh wait, I have to go do something. You know, I'm not in the mood for this now. I'll just put this aside. It is going to get rock hard at this stage, whether you want it to or not. So after I've mixed some clay, I always have little extra things around in case I end up having more epoxy clay than I want. I can begin a second tin or a little pendant or put a few CZs on a gemstone or whatever I want to do with those little extra bits. And that way I have extra projects that are being worked on a little at a time as I have extra clay. All right, so there is my mixed up piece. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the lid of my tin. Then I'll take my gloves off for some more fine motor skills. I'm going to save some here because we're going to do things with that. So I'm going to take what's left. Remember that if you touch the tin with your fingers full of stickiness, you're going to get that all over the tin. So I'm going to just press that into place mostly. Then I'm going to take my gloves off and finish the process so I don't get sticky cement all over the universe. But I've got my wet wipe handy so I do not get it all on myself permanently and I minimize my contact with chemicals. Some people are quite sensitive to resins and this is in the resin family. So you want to minimize your skin contact because your skin is a giant organ just ready to absorb things, good and bad. So you want to minimize any weird absorption. All right, so this is what we've got now. I'm anticipating something that will cover that whole rim. So I'm not worried about making it perfect, but you could make it go down the sides if you wanted to cover it with crystal or anything like that, just go nuts. So the first thing I thought I would do is just, let's see, about placing these little cutouts in here. Now I'll have to play with them because I don't know if I need to overlap or if they'll just be side to side, so we'll see. Now look at how that's grabbing. Could you do that with glue? You could not. And this is nice because you couldn't do it with polymer clay either because polymer clay can't permanently bond to metal. It needs a little help. And this though lets you do it exactly. All right, so I've got a little bit more space here. So I'm going to adjust everything. You've got an hour to an hour and a half of working time. So don't worry, you've got plenty of time. Let's just sort of make everybody overlap just a little bit. Even that up. So now we've got like a petal thing. And you notice that I'm kind of pushing down so those little petals kind of stick up a little bit too, because why not? Now, after I get this all done, if I go, Boy, I sure wish I had swell again to that. I still can because it won't matter. Epoxy clay can take whatever I want to put on it, including paints and swell again. So now the next thing is to decide, do I want this one to go up there or this big one? And do I want to add some of these other bits in between? They're kind of big. That could be neat. It might just be too much. So let's just see how I feel about it. I'm going to gently place them on there and see what I feel. A little triad there. I don't think that does anything for me in terms of design. So we're going to just gently take those off. I didn't press them in and we're going to put this on now. Now I have a plenty for this to stick, but I'd like it to stick up a little bit. So I'm going to take just a bit more. All right. So now I can just put that on top and press it in there and take a look at my petals and do any adjusting at this point, pulling something out or in. And that's kind of a fun look, right? So now what if we had like a pearl in the center and we put our CZs here and there? That could be a fun thing, right? So let's move these rejects. They'll have to be for another project later. Sorry, dudes. And we're going to take another bit of our epoxy clay, enough to center my pearl right in the center. And again, look at how fun this is. It's sticky. It's grabbing right to the center. I'm going to roll it up again because it had a little wrinkle on it. Press it down so that it grabs just a bit. Now I'm going to take my pearl. This has got a drill hole down at the bottom. So that means if I embed it in properly, I won't see any holes and it'll just be a fun little button. All right, I'm taking a break to clean my fingers. Make sure that's all good. Now, where do I want to put my little CZs? I can have a little ball each place that I want to put them, or I can do one little cluster, like I could put something all around here. So I think that's where I'll start with. Let's grab a few of these tiny reds. I'm going to bring the whole handful over here. They're so little and I love them so much. They're the cutest little things. Moistened finger works really nicely. 
All right, I'm using just a little bit of clay, and with any luck, I'm gonna pick them up so I can stick the points in and use my finger to press. Pick up and put in. So you see what I'm doing there? Is I'm just pressing them in in a nice little cluster. They will stick right in permanently. It's amazing how wonderful this is. So you have to just make sure you get them with the point going in first, because that's much prettier. I mean, there's nothing that says you couldn't do it the other way around, but I don't know. I think somebody would call you out on that, don't you? And if so, just say, oh no, that was a design choice. That's the cool thing about art, is you can just cover mistakes and pretend that you did it on purpose. As long as it looks good, it doesn't matter. There we go. All right, so see what I'm doing is I'm just putting these cute little clusters of crystals all around. And while I'm at it, why don't I get one or two of these big ones that are just hanging out here and I can make that fill in faster. Because they'll also look good with this color combination. Sometimes they don't want to go in. My clay's getting too gooey. Up clay, up. There we are. One in there. We've got three, which is a perfect amount. One in over here. And I'm going to use my tool just to kind of shove that in just a little bit more. There we go. And we'll do one more. Three is always a good choice for design purposes. Fill in the gap with our last little bits of red. And then you can decide if you want to do more than that. If you want to put little balls of clay anywhere along the way, little balls of epoxy clay. I just want you to make sure you know which, what clay I'm talking about. Um, around here and, and introduce other bits and pieces. It's all good. But I'm going to go with just this little nubbin. It's enough. Okay, look it all over, see if there's any gaps. I think right here. All right, so look what we've got. Look at that fun little cluster. So now I've got metal clay, I've got a pearl, I've got stampings that I can choose to color later with Swelligant if I feel like it, and a nice little cluster of crystals. The last thing I think we'll do is I'm going to take a paintbrush and take a little pan pastel. Pan pastel is a powder, but it's very thick and opaque, and it loves to grab on the surface of epoxy clay. And it will harden, because this is an air dry clay, you don't put it in the oven, it air dries, and it will harden with that color attached. Now there's probably more than I need there, so I'm gonna just lightly brush away the excess. And when it's all done, there may still be a little extra, don't worry, just brush away what you don't need. You see some of it is on the metal clay. Don't get excited. It won't stay there. But you can always bring purple Swelligant dye if you decide that that purple's fun. Okay, so now you have a wonderful, fun little tin. It needs to completely dry 24 hours, and then it'll be rock hard, and you can decide what to do from there. You may paint the outside. You may add more things. But isn't that a fun little treasure? If you make jewelry, how fun would that be to put your jewelry piece inside as a fun little gift inside a gift? Pretty exciting, right? So aren't you intrigued by what you can do with this epoxy clay? And just remember, just about everything other than plastics are going to naturally just grab to that clay and let you build up. And once it's dry, if you go, oh, I really wanted one more crystal, you just mix a little bit more and add that. It's not done till you decide it's done. So I hope that you will find a place for epoxy clay in your heart and in your workshop because it is just amazing. It lets you bring in all these things you already do and take them to a whole nother level. So get that epoxy clay and get creating, baby. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.